Stick with me, kid. Hello, my beautiful friends. Normally, I show my face whenever doing scripted videos, but today I have elected to cheat, as it were, as this whole quarantine situation has made filming difficult and sometimes even impossible. I hope you find it in your heart to forgive me. Let's get to it, though. If you're anything like me, you've been stuck inside playing Animal Crossing New Horizons since launch, and it has been a light in dark times. The game has completely overrun Twitter, and I've had a blast watching all my friends and acquaintances enjoy the heck out of it. However, perhaps inevitably, a debate has surfaced about time travelers. And no, I'm not talking about the woman talking on the cell phone in that Charlie Chaplin movie from 1928. I'm a believer. Instead, I am referring to the concept of changing your Switch's clock in order to advance or reverse time in Animal Crossing. This is very easy to do, and as a result, you can trick your game into thinking any amount of time has passed in order to manipulate many of the game's mechanics. There are those who rebuke time travelers, claiming that they are missing the point of the game entirely, and then of course there are those who staunchly defend the practice, citing a number of reasons which we'll go over in a bit. Are these time travelers cheaters? Are they ruining the game? Should they be harshly rebuked? The answer may surprise you because it's yes. Just kidding. But let's talk about it. Since the beginning, Animal Crossing has been tied to an actual clock, and the concept of altering that clock has always been an option to any player. I remember playing the GameCube one obsessively when I was a teenager, and when I swapped towns with my friend, I wondered why his was so full of weeds. Gosh, he could really use some help cleaning up, I thought to myself, as I very helpfully spent an hour picking every single one. But then when I got my town back, I saw that he had messed with the clock and had filled my town with weeds too. Thanks, Matt. Obviously, the developers try to gently discourage time travel with things like weeds, where they accumulate in your town over time, so if you skip ahead a bunch, you'll have a bit of a mess to clean up. They've also tried to curb abuse of the turnip system by having all your turnips spoil if you so much as touch the clock. Overall, though, there isn't too much in place to discourage the practice. In fact, the game's developers revealed that while they do think people will have a better time playing Animal Crossing legitimately, they're not gonna call people out or call them cheaters or anything. But what do I think? Well, it's a little difficult to give an opinion on this because no matter how many times you say, this is just my opinion, you'll still get people telling you to stop gatekeeping and let people enjoy games how they want. This video was in fact partially inspired by a Twitter conversation with a friend where we expressed our shared distaste of the concept of time travel with the very clear disclaimer that it was just a personal opinion and that people were allowed to play however they wanted and we still got people accusing us of all sorts of stuff. Not gonna show the conversation because I don't want to send any more of that their way, but Kane, if you could give us a recreation of what you think it looked like, that would be great. There we go, perfect. Thank you. Point is, based on my own personal experience with Animal Crossing, the very idea of time travel is a big no-no. It absolutely is cheating. Let's not kid ourselves. I, I mean, it's the very definition of the word. There are plenty of games where I could get behind cheating to have a little extra fun, but Animal Crossing in particular just feels like it falls apart when any facet of the game is broken. Things happening over time is exactly what makes them fun and special. Delayed satisfaction is the name of the game. Especially now, with this whole crafting and building system, the entire point of the game is that slow, long progression. Like, if they removed the time mechanic entirely and gave you everything instantly or after some small amount of in-game time, I don't think I would find the game fun anymore. Like, the gameplay itself isn't fun enough to just burn through all on its own. The fun is in balancing the game aspect with the sim aspect. Time traveling to get everything I wanted right when I wanted it would turn the game into nothing more than a little house simulator where meeting my goals didn't mean nearly as much and all I did was decorate stuff. I mean, nothing in Animal Crossing is that exciting all by itself. <laughs> you know what I mean? Having a fully upgraded house soon after launch would mean nothing to me if I cheated to get it. Having a fully upgraded house a month or two from now will make me go all right. Good job me, you put in the work, congratulations. Don't think about how superficial and silly this all is and enjoy the accomplishment. Now I know time travel defenders are picking up their pitchforks right now, but let me finish. Like I said, that's just me. 
I personally feel that the time mechanic can't be compromised without the game delivering a less satisfying experience, but I also recognize that people play games for different reasons. I mean, this is a core belief for me. I talked about it at length in my video, Link's Awakening Remakes Art Styles and Opinions. No one should tell you how you can or can't enjoy a game. Even if I don't understand it, even if it seems like it goes against the very concept of the game, that's just me. It's your game too. You play it how you like. Keep all that in mind moving forward, though I do still want to explore the whole concept and why some people feel compelled to do it. I will continue to offer my own quote-unquote arguments, so forgive me if it sounds like a constant attempt to tell time travelers how they're wrong. It's definitely not. If anything, it's me trying to better understand their perspectives and to voice my continued questions in order to keep the conversation going. Even if I don't get it, that doesn't mean I'm going to hold it against you. As always, feel free to head down to the comments if you want to counter or otherwise discuss any of my points. I see two main arguments presented by time travelers themselves. One is that they don't have a lot of time to play the game, so they want to cut down on some of the waiting. They want to speed up the experience a little. This is the argument I have the hardest time understanding. Animal Crossing has always been designed to be played a little bit every day. If you can get more out of it than that, then fine, but it was built specifically with a busy person in mind. It's not like some games where you have to grind hundreds of hours in game to get anywhere. We're talking about time where the game would have been shut off entirely. So I don't really get the idea that anyone doesn't have the time to essentially not play the game while they're waiting for another day to come along. I've been playing it several hours a day, but that's just because I enjoy it so much. I run out of official daily stuff to do, like picking fruit and digging up fossils and such very quickly. But that does lead me to the second point I hear most often. People feel that they run out of things to do after a while and they don't like it. They don't want the game to gate off so much of its content behind a whole bunch of real-time waiting. This one I understand a bit more. These people paid 60 bucks for the game and they just want it to keep going. Makes sense. Though, while I feel that such a point was more valid in past Animal Crossing games, it's a little less so here. The developers very purposefully designed this game so that there's always something to do. Even once you've done all the regular chores for the day, you can always grind Nook Miles Plus rewards, and you can even use those rewards to visit random islands and gather materials. If you're playing aggressively in order to progress as fast as possible, a huge amount of the game boils down to farming materials, and this is something you can always be doing. Along with endlessly crafting furniture and fishing and catching bugs and all that to sell in the morning when the shop opens up. But hey, if that's not enough for some people, that's fine. Maybe they don't feel like chopping trees while they wait. They want the store to open up so they can sell that stuff immediately. They've got money and they want to get their house upgrade going. I get it. Even if I feel that the slow, legitimate progression is the entire point, I must acknowledge that plenty of people just plain old don't feel the same way. To many, the game is simply about meeting a series of goals, and splitting those goals up between many days, weeks, and even months is simply getting in the way of their fun. On top of the idea that people play games for different reasons, it's also worth noting that people who who do decide to cheat do so in different ways and to different lengths. If you want to talk about real cheating, let's talk about item duping. <laughs> It is a lot harder for me to understand the appeal of that. I feel like it renders the entire game and all of its mechanics and goals entirely worthless. If you could just make all the bells you want, then hooray, you win. I guess. I suppose for some people, they don't even want to treat it like a game. They only want to enjoy the sim part, and they want to have everything given to them right away so they can fix up their house and their town however they like. That's their thing. <laughs> ah, but what if they only dupe items sparingly? What if they don't fill up their bank accounts with bells? They just want to make a few extra Nook Miles tickets so they can visit islands when they don't have any miles left. Or they want to create a couple extra apples so they can fill out their orchard without having to wait four days. Or they don't feel like spending time chopping trees and just want to increase what they already have. What if it's just little innocent stuff here and there? Well, I can definitely understand that. Personally, I still would never even touch such a thing because I wouldn't know exactly where the line should be. If I had the option, I would be constantly torn between enjoying the delayed rewards and saving myself a little time. While this one tiny thing is harmless, the time it takes is entirely artificial to keep me playing for longer, but then the whole game starts to feel that way, and I'm always tempted to push it just a little bit further, just dupe one more thing, just make a couple more bells so I can pay off my house just a little bit faster. 
Yeah, just doesn't work for me. That kind of power can't even be on the table or else it will compromise my entire experience. But if someone has the willpower to use it sparingly, hey, more power to them. But that's a good example of how not all cheating means destroying the entire game and getting everything you want instantly, and the same is true for time traveling. Some people will argue that skipping ahead doesn't actually just magically give you everything. You've still got to put in the work to collect enough materials and catch all the bugs and fish and stuff. And that is true, but only when you keep your time traveling in check. There definitely are ways to completely abuse the system. You can put all your bells in the bank, skip ahead a few decades, and collect a ton of interest. You can skip ahead to Sunday and spend all your money on turnips, then find a friend whose shop is buying them for a decent price and go back and forth buying and selling infinitely. Or even just digging up and selling fossils and planting and harvesting money trees again and again will net you some pretty good rewards. It all comes down to the individual person and what they want to do. Once again, I feel like if I let myself time travel a little, even if it's just because I want the shop to be open because I'm excited to sell some stuff, or I want my house upgrade to be completed just one day early, or I missed catching a certain fish while it was still summer and I don't want to wait nine months to get another chance, then I'm always going to be tempted to push things a little further. People who can just take those tiny little shortcuts and enjoy the game all the more because of them though, I envy you. I really do. And of course, if you want to go back and forth selling infinite turnips and duplicating everything and traveling to the year 2030 where you have every house upgrade and every piece of furniture in the game and every shop and villager in your town all after only playing the game for a week, I don't understand it. Makes me wonder why you're playing a sim game in the first place. But I still can't say you're wrong for doing it. If that's how you enjoy the game, then you do you. Some people will tell you you're ruining the game for yourself. And you know what? For all I know, they're right. Maybe you went a little off the rails with the cheating and here at the end of it all, you're realizing that you probably would have had a lot more fun playing at least somewhat more legitimately but that's still on you. It's not anyone's job to police your experience and make sure you don't ruin it for yourself. You do you. That is the credo I hold close to my heart. Though one final point I'd like to make is that none of this really matters when it doesn't affect anyone else. You shouldn't care what I do in my own Animal Crossing town, but when people cheat and then post about it online, that's when I start to feel like a line is being crossed. This can spoil aspects of the game for other people. This can create an unrealistic idea of where a person should be in the game and make some people wonder if they're doing something wrong. Obviously, people are gonna post what they wanna post and no one can do anything about it, but if someone's whole goal in breaking the game is to go on Twitter and show off to everyone how cool their town is and how rich they are, then... That is the closest I will come to telling a person that they're playing a game the wrong way. We're all having a great time sharing our experiences on social media. The social aspect is helping to make this the best Animal Crossing experience ever, if you ask me. But if a person can't help but stumble upon a bunch of cheaty material that spoils some stuff and kills a little bit of the magic of doing everything slowly and legitimately, well, that's the risk they take going on social media, and ideally, no one else's experience should affect their own, but I will say that it kind of stinks. It stinks that sometimes you just can't get away from that stuff. In conclusion, just in case it wasn't abundantly clear, is time traveling and Animal Crossing cheating? Is item duping cheating? Absolutely. But hey, people are allowed to cheat. I don't get it. I feel like I'd cheat in just about any other game in the world before I cheated in Animal Crossing. Cheating would break down the fibers of the game and make the whole thing feel kind of worthless. But that's just me. You can cheat all you want. Who cares? Do you cheat in Animal Crossing? Are you a serial tarantula duper? Or maybe you just skipped a few hours one time to get that museum open a little faster? Let me know down in the comments. Thank you for watching and thank goodness this video is finally over. Come to Papa. Woo -hoo 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 -hoo. Oh yeah, that's better. That's better right there. Oops, I didn't, uh, I didn't turn off the microphone. That's okay, I'll, um, I'll, uh, I'll do it in a, in a minute. Oh, garden gnome, whoa! Oh, I'm gonna use that. I'm gonna put that garden gnome right now. Thank you. Right over here. Uh 
huh? Oh, it's adorable. I like it. Put right next to my flowers. I'm gonna name him Jeffy. Jeffy the garden gnome. 